In this video from Learning Metrics, we will look at the Ohm's Law wheel, which combines the Ohm's Law and Power Law triangles together in one set of formulas. These two formulas, Ohm's Law and Power Law, are fundamental to understanding electrics and feature in many electrical trade exams. Some new starters struggle with understanding how we arrive at these combined formulas. So in this video, we will show you. I've also included the power matrix, a variation of the wheel that is, for me, much easier to understand and use. We will show you some example calculations, and then it's over to you to have a go at some practice questions. And yes, we've provided the answers. We should all be familiar with Ohm's law and power law, but can we combine them to make electrical calculations easier? And if we can, how do we do it? There are four variables that we are interested in. Power, voltage, current and resistance. Three of them form calculations that are in the Ohm's Law Triangle. And three of them make calculations for the Power Triangle, as shown here. We could combine the two triangles to make one modified triangle that incorporates all four variables. And this is how I visualise Ohm's Law and Power Law. They are, after all, interrelated. If we ignore the P for power, we have the basic Ohm's Law triangle, and shown here are the three calculations that we can perform with Ohm's Law. If we cover the R for resistance, we are left with a sort of triangle on its side, and I think you can see that this is the power triangle. Shown in the box are the three calculations that are possible from this triangle. By using the four-way triangle, we can find the six calculations that will help us to find any of the four variables, power, voltage, current and resistance. This is great, but still involves two calculations at times. So can we find a way to determine any variable with just one calculation? We can use the Ohm's Law wheel, and if we know any two values, then we can find any of the others using just one calculation. This is the Ohm's Law wheel, and generations of electricians and engineers have learned to use it. Pause the video and take a few moments to look at it. Now, if we know any two values, can we calculate any other in just one calculation? So how do we get from two triangles to the Ohm's Law wheel? Let's go back to basics and see how this can be. If we only know the current and resistance in a circuit, then how can we calculate the power? We have to do this in two steps. First, calculate the voltage using Ohm's law, and then the second step, calculate the power using the newly found voltage and the current. Two steps, two calculations, if we use the triangles. Using the wheel, we can do this in one calculation. We know the current I is 6 amps, and the resistance R is 40 ohms, since this was given information. The wheel tells us that the power can be found by squaring the current and multiplying by the resistance, in other words, I squared times R. If we do this, we have an answer of 1440 watts. But why does this work? Let's see. Power is equal to voltage times current, but we don't know the voltage. So off we go to the Ohm's Law Triangle. Here we find that the voltage is I times R, and we do know both of these. We can substitute I times R for V in the first equation. So, if voltage is I times R, and power is V times I, then P power can also be written as I times R times I. Put the two I's together as I squared, and we have P equals I squared times R. And that is how we can find the power without knowing the voltage. Let's look now at the power matrix as I call it, and I actually found this easier to use than the wheel. I created this table or matrix to help me find answers more quickly than the Ohm's Law wheel. Clearly shown on the left hand side are the various combinations of two values from four. Basically, if you know any two values, then you can find any of the other two instantly. It's the same as the wheel, but much easier. And we will put a copy of the wheel and this matrix onto the website at learnelectrics.com. 
We can quickly search for the two values that we already know, and the matrix will show you the required calculation to find the answers for the other two values. We can work through some examples now, so that you better understand. The big question is, does it work? If we make all the possible combinations of calculation, will it always give us the correct answer? We can begin by giving you all four values and then work through the table using just two values at a time. If all is good, then all the calculations should give the same answers as above. These expected answers will be repeated on each slide so that we can check each one. My suggestion is that you pause the video on each slide and have a go at doing the calculations yourself. Practice and repetition really is the way to learn these. On this first example, we want to find the voltage, and the matrix shows that there are three possible combinations to achieve this. We've shown you the working out for each one. Pause the video and make sure that you understand the calculation and that you get the same answers. Here, we want to calculate the current, and again, the matrix shows the options available to us. Each of the three possible calculations are shown. Pause the video and check your answers. And now resistance. Three calculations available to us depending on which two variables are known to us. Pause and check that you are in agreement. And lastly, find the power. The three options are shown. Pause the video again and work through the calculations. A quick summary of the different forms of calculation available to us and then we will have some questions for you to attempt yourselves. Shown here are the Ohm's Law and Power Law triangles. The four-part triangle shows the relationship between Ohm's Law and Power Law. V and I are common to Ohm's Law and to Power Law. But power and resistance only appear in one triangle each. This is the Ohm's Law wheel, which allows us to enter any two variables to find a third variable in just one calculation. And this is the Ohm's Law matrix, or power matrix. It has the same function as the wheel, but it clearly shows the options for the two known variables. It's your choice which one you want to use, or just stay with the two basic triangles. They should all give the same answers. A little practice now. Four questions for you to attempt yourselves. Pause the video on each slide and attempt the calculation. Answers will be on the next slide following. First question. Find the power if the current is 8 amps and the resistance is 10 ohms. The two known values are current and resistance. The matrix shows that we can calculate voltage and power with this information. It is the power that we want, so choose the appropriate calculation and find the answer. Pause the video and complete the calculation. The answer and the calculation are shown below the matrix. If you didn't get 640 watts, then pause the video and look at how we arrived at the answer. On to practice question number two. We are asked to find the voltage if the resistance is 44 ohms and the power is 1100 watts. Pause the video and attempt this yourself. Here is the calculation and the answer, 220 volts. Hopefully you agree. If not, pause the video and check your working out. Question number three now. We are asked to find the current when the resistance is 44 ohms and the power is 1,100 watts. Pause the video and make the calculation yourself. The answers are on the next slide. Here we have the answer, and hopefully you agree with our answer of 5 amps. And finally, question number four. Find the resistance if the voltage is 230 volts and the power is 4,600 watts. Pause and calculate again. Your answer should be as shown below the matrix. If not, pause and check. The three things that you must become proficient at, especially for exams, are using formulas and knowing which is the right one to use, making calculations, which means understanding your calculator, don't wait until the day of the exam to learn how to use your calculator. And most exams prohibit the use of calculators on mobile phones or tablets. Get yourself a basic standalone calculator and practice the calculations with that.
And manipulating formulas is very important. You must learn how to manipulate or change formulas. All it takes is practice and repetition, and then practice and repeat again at frequent intervals until the method becomes fixed in your memory. Practice and repeat. It works. Thank you for watching. It's very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.